Confused by your leads method clusters? Hi, I'm Dana Leeds, the creator of this technique that helps you sort your DNA matches into meaningful clusters. Whether you're seeing two clusters or 12, the number might not be what it seems. Today, I'll show you how to merge multiple clusters that actually belong together, as well as how to split clusters that should be separated. Stay tuned to see how you can get the best results out of your leads method clusters. And you can see we have seven different color clusters. And I'm not really going to go into the steps of the leads method. If you need the basic steps of the leads method, I'll leave a link up here and down below. Now, just as a reminder, the ones with the asterisks are the key persons or people. They're the ones I started each cluster with. So here I looked at Don and his shared matches and they became the orange cluster. Sarah and her shared matches are the blue cluster. And these are from 400 down to 90 cinnamorgans. Okay, so I have these seven color clusters. And a best case scenario is four color clusters representing our four grandparent lines. But really, whenever we get clusters, the key is to figure out what they mean. And the people in each cluster are related to each other because they are connected to each other and are from a specific part of your tree. We often get more or fewer than these four clusters, and it's based on your own tree, how the people are related to each other, and who has tested. And so before we actually start working with our clusters, it's great to either consolidate or merge some clusters that should actually be together, or separate some clusters where two have kind of merged together and they could actually be two separate ones and give us more information. So that's what we're going to look at. And I use the term heavy overlap. So overlap is when a person has more than one color. For example, here we have CL that is both blue, yellow, and dark blue. So those colors are overlap, or CL has overlap of those three colors. And then I use the term heavy overlap, when most of the people in one color are also in another. Let's look at dark blue and yellow. Almost everybody who is dark blue is also in yellow. The only exceptions is this person here, and I saw one right here. But everybody else that's in dark blue is also in yellow, so those really represent the same part of my tree, so I could combine them, and that's what we're going to look at doing. Now to do that, I start by looking for that heavy overlap just with my eyes, and I'm going to move those columns next to each other so we can see it better. And so besides the dark blue and the yellow, also, the regular blue has a lot of that so same overlap. So I'm going to move those together first. And so I'm going to just highlight, whoops, I'm going to highlight these, say insert. I've hid these tabs so we can get more room. So now I'm going to say I want no fill in those. And now, and I'm using Excel on Windows, I'm clicking on the J and making it turn into this little um, four arrowed thing and moving that there and moving the dark blue here. And I can get rid of this um, because that was just an empty column. Now we can see most of the people who are purple are also red. We can leave that. Let's look at green and orange. This person's green and orange, green and orange, green and orange. So actually the only person who's green that is not orange is this person. So let's, I'm going to click here, right click and say insert. And I don't even need to turn those blank. I can just grab this where I've got the four arrows and move it over here. And I'm going to delete this just because I like to keep things pretty. Okay, this orange and blue, I don't see anything else overlapping with them. We've got these three colors. They look pretty good. And then we have red and purple. So those are our three different main clusters. And so let's see what we need to consolidate. Here again, we've got um, almost everybody all but this key person is uh, the green people is also orange. So I'm gonna put orange here and I need to go to home and the drop down, and this is the color I was using. And so now I can delete this column. I can also go ahead and delete these because I was just wanting to show you how many columns were there. Okay, blue, yellow, and dark blue. Okay, dark blue and yellow are lots of overlap. So I'm gonna put yellow wherever there's, um, there's not a dark blue because when I delete dark blue, I don't want to lose anybody and I need one right there. Sorry if these clicks are kind of loud. Okay, that looks like it. So I can get rid of this dark blue uh, cluster. And now I can really do the same yellow and light blue, like almost every yellow person is regular blue. 
So I need to put some blue right here. And I need to make sure I get the right blue. That's not it. This is it here. And I need one right here. So I'll put this one blue. Why is it telling me no? <laughs> okay, home, blue, and this one right here. Okay. Yeah, those are kind of loud clicks. Okay, so every yellow person is also blue now. I can get rid of yellow and delete. And then we've got the red and the purple. So I just need one purple here because three out of the four people are red. Three out of the four purple people are red. So I just want to put purple, uh, red there. I think it's this red. And I can delete this. And, okay, that is my whole chart. So I only have three color clusters. Now to sort this, I'm going to, there's always multiple ways to do things in Excel and I'm in Windows. But to sort, I'm going to click this little triangle in the top that selects the entire chart, and I'm going to say data, sort. Now, I don't have headers on these three, but I do have a header row. And so I need to say my data has headers. Otherwise, that top row will be sorted within everything else. And so now I want to sort by column D with the orange, E with the blue, F with the red. And so I can say I want to sort by column D, by cell colors and I want the orange on top. And then I'm gonna copy that twice just to save a little bit of time. I'm gonna say E, and then I'm gonna say F, and then I'm gonna change, whoops, what happened here? Okay, we're good. And I'm gonna put the blue and the red. And this is a good check here because sometimes I've done this myself. I've accidentally chosen two different types of red, and then you would see the two reds here or whatever color. And this would be a good time you would, Step back and go back and make sure you color them all the same. But I can just say that and OK. And now we still have this header at the top. And we can see I only have three clusters. Now, a best case scenario is seeing four colors for four grandparent lines. Not everyone will see that. There are a few reasons for this. One, you might not have anybody who has tested between 90 and 400 centimorgans for a specific part of your tree. Let's say one of your grandparents is from a country where they're not really DNA testing, or maybe it's just a very small family and you don't have second and third cousins who would fall in this area, this Cinnamorgan range, or not very many, that could be why you're missing a color cluster, a cluster to represent your four grandparents. Another reason is pedigree collapse or endogamy, where the different parts of your tree, like your two grandparents, let's say your two paternal grandparents are related to each other. They came from the same, island or same small community, or they're related further back in time. That could be another reason. And the third reason is the key person, these with the white dots, or sometimes I have black, they're asterisks. These people might be related to you through two of your grandparents. And the most common scenario is they are younger first cousins once or twice removed. So they're like your cousins, children or grandchildren. And that's the most likely case in mind. I know I've got all four lines represented here. And I know I don't have any of two of my grandparents that are related to each other, but I do have some younger first cousins once removed who have tested. And so if I got this, and maybe you don't know anything about why yours formed, the first thing I would do is I would skip each of these key people and go to the next person and then try it again and see if, um, an additional column formed. So I'm going to do a control Z to unsort these. So it's back here to um, this normal way of looking at it to me. And so if I skip Don here, it would be JB and I would work with them. Or if I skip Sarah, I would start with Stacy or Sarah and I'd start with um, Joy. Now, again, I know quite a bit about my family. I know who this Sarah is. She is a maternal first cousin once removed. And so she has grabbed all of her matches. So she's basically grabbed everybody on my mom's side and created this one blue cluster. So I'm gonna skip her and start with Stacy and do this part again. So I spent a few minutes, the orange and red are the two we originally had, but I took the blue apart, but now we have a new head person, Stacy. And instead of getting two more clusters, we actually got five more, but hopefully you see all this heavy overlap. 
And so we are going to combine all of these and we're going to combine them to purple. So we're just looking if there's a green, yellow or dark blue that doesn't have a purple, we want to add that like right here. So this is going to be purple. And let's see if there's others. We need these two to be purple. And this to be purple. I think that might be it. Whoops. Sometimes I'm not sure. It's wanting me to type <laughs> home purple. So we can go ahead and le uh, left click and highlight these and delete these three columns. And now we have four columns. And I want you to see that if I highlight Sarah here, she's showing as both blue and purple. This blue and purple is representing the two sides of my maternal matches. We also have JB here, who's orange and red. He's She is also a first cousin once removed on my dad's side. So paternally, she's a first cousin, a first cousin's child. And so she matches both sides of my dad's family. If Dawn hadn't have been here and she'd been the first person, then I would have had the same issue over there. And so let's just sort these to make them look better. Data, sort, and we're gonna go through this real quick again. And I have it all set up and I'll click OK. And now we have it sorted. And once again, you can see all of this. And I have something strange going on here. I'm going to go back and check it. I believe this is probably a mistake, although it could it could be that Janice just happens to be related. So this is my dad's side. This is my mom's side. It could be. But I think this is most likely a mistake. So let me go look at Janice. I would want to look at CL and see if Janice really shows up as a match to CL. And I just checked and that was a mistake. So I'm going to just clean that up and erase that because it didn't make sense that um, Janice, who is showing up in the orange and red, which is my dad's side, that she would also be showing up on the mom's side. So I just checked and this was the key person. So how she should have gotten the purple and she is not on the shared match list of CL. So it was my mistake. And now we have this great chart. And I noticed a small mistake I wanted to go back and fix. I forgot to say that my data has headers. And if I would have, since I didn't select that, the header down here got mixed in. And so I'll fix that. I started on a second case study, but it started getting quite complicated and I messed some things up and I'm going to have to start again. And it's a very lengthy process, but it has some excellent teaching in it. So I will save that for next time. Down below, there's a link to my newsletter where I share more tips as well as your wins and your questions. So if you have any success stories or questions, please share them and I might share them in my next newsletter. And I hope to see you next time.